more tags, no tags. Hey, what is up, good people? Welcome to the Midnight Drop. We talk about all that good stuff with movies, TV shows, comic books, social commentary, and everything in between. I'm your host, Jordan Malone. Tonight, we're going to be talking about Star Wars Acolyte. We're then going to be talking about Alien Romulus, the two trailers for those two franchises. One franchise that's a little bit off its rocker and it's kind of doing its own thing again. And another franchise to where, oh, haven't seen you in a minute. And you come back with some old nostalgia that I'm actually looking forward to. Then later on, we'll be talking about Marvel 1943, uh, The Rise of Hydra. That trailer has been blowing up a little bit. I want to check out about that. Uh, also talk about Dragon Ball Z, Sparking Zero. And then finally, I'll give you guys pretty much my, you know, early thoughts on X-Men 97 as I got to see uh, a good amount of episodes one and two and was just very curious about that. So with that being said, uh, you can check us out on Spotify for our full episodes, TikTok while it's still here before it gets banned, Instagram, and also on YouTube. Where we post out clips and all that good stuff and with that being said let's go ahead and get into the business uh it is good to be back here as always i'm not gonna lie to you i was contemplating on doing an episode uh because there is a part of me that i was like one my my head is hurting from like staying up late last night since like three o'clock in the morning doing school work and doing other types of editing uh I posted one video earlier today that's pretty much my reaction on the dan schneider apology video which i might have that uploaded on spotify if you guys care to listen or whatever then uh it was just you know just not getting adequate sleep just being on in front of my computer all day which i'm in front of this camera now so i'm gonna try to get some sleep tonight didn't go to the gym but uh yeah we're all looking forward to that I also been planning just more episodes, more stuff with me by myself, and then some more stuff with Lance that's going to come on on Friday, and then uh, the barbershop episode that's coming on Sunday, which you guys should tune in for that. Uh, but with that being said, a lot of stuff dropped today, a lot of stuff, you know, happened, it would be new releases, trailers for movies, and you know what, the, you know, I just, you know, felt like it'd be a really good time to make this a day where we talk about all that type of stuff. So I don't know if it's going to be a really long episode. Um, I hope not. But uh, there are going to be some pretty cool discussions and conversations with that going forward. So let's start off with the first one that I want to get into. Uh, Star Wars Acolyte. Um, that is the newest Star Wars TV show and a long list of Star Wars TV show properties on Disney Plus that we've gotten in the last couple of years since the end of the Star Wars sequel series. And it's been a crazy ride. It just feels like, you know, at one point we get one show that breaks the internet. Everyone's in love with it because it brings in all these cool ass cameos and nostalgia moments and, and really pushes forward the boundaries in which you can tell a Star Wars story in. And in other times you get a Star Wars TV show that's just completely mid. It's just middle of the road. And, you know, there's just some sort of division between it. Then you get other Star Wars moments that are just flat out horrible and there are moments in there where you're just like this is a big disappointment uh i'm looking at some parts of the mandalorian season three and i'm also looking at <laughs> not gonna lie the book of boba fett as a whole except for like maybe two episodes so with that being said you got this new series in star wars the acolyte which it's the the, the catch for this the hook for this is that it seems to be taking place a hundred years before uh, the Skywalker saga, which a lot of people, including myself for a little bit, have been kind of asking for that. Can we get more content that's not revolving around the Skywalker saga from episodes one through nine? Can we get some to where we actually focus on other Star Wars stories? And I think for one thing is that when you're getting something like Star Wars The Acolyte, it's really dope to see a story and where it's probably going to be talking about, you know, the old Republic of Star Wars. If you don't know what the old Republic is, the old Republic, again, is a hundred years set before the Skywalker saga. And it's focusing on how do we get from here to here? How do we get from the rise of the Sith? How did we get from, you know, the, the, you know, the fall of the Jedi from what they were in the old Republic to then in the Skywalker saga to where they just become, you know, war generals. How do we get to certain aspects of the Star Wars universe? How do we understand some of these relationships, these characters, and how certain civilizations came and went? Um, you know, certain aspects of just, you know, the force that came about and just some really cool original stories. 
And with this, the Acolyte, it seems like it's going to be a step into that, that direction, and we'll see how it goes. Now, I won't lie to you, uh, as looking up this trailer, there's already people with the same old same old talking about uh, Star Wars is woke, attacking Kathleen Kennedy, uh, going in, feeling they're not feeling it, uh, people feeling some type of way, and... I just have to keep it a buck with you. I'm just going to let y'all know I, <laughs> I'm 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 in the middle of this shit. I don't I don't give a crap and I have criticisms about each side. So as you know, I watch some of the Star Wars content and I'll probably go in further as we go along with this. I have my reasons for feeling about Star Wars and going into it. So there's that. So with that being said, let's go ahead and check out the Star Wars Acolyte trailer and let's go ahead and, you know, give you my thoughts on it real quick because I know some of y'all probably already watched it. And for me, I watched it definitely. And I want to go ahead and watch it again and just give you my full on thoughts on just how I feel about the series itself. So let's go ahead and just uh, crack it right in right now. Star Wars Acolyte. Oh, hold on. Sorry about that, guys. Hold on. I got to go ahead and put in the Bluetooth because I know you guys are not going to listen. Uh, I will say this as I'm getting things together. Um, we're getting this series, and then I think sometime next year we're getting like a Star Wars movie again. So looks like we're going to get a primer. We're going to get a little bit of some content before we finally get back into the good old Star Wars movie run. Am I right? All right. Finally, going back into this the trailer for Star Wars Acolyte. Let's get into it. Close your eyes. Your eyes can deceive you. We must not trust them. Tell me what comes into your mind. Life. Balance. I see fire. <laughs> wait, wait, what? You see what? what? What did you say, little nigga? You see what? Someone is killing Jedi. It doesn't make sense. What happened? I sensed darkness. This isn't about good or bad. This is about power, and who is allowed to use it? What is that? Okay. Be real, that trailer was actually pretty cool. It's very interesting, and it gives me sort of the vibe of like Star Wars Andor and Rogue One, which that's what I those are my favorite Star Wars projects. I loved Star Wars Rogue One for just how dark and gritty it got, and I really, really enjoyed uh, Star Wars Andor. Oh, I really enjoyed Andor for what it was as being a you know a prequel series to Star Wars Rogue One and it kind of took us away from the big Jedi battles and the Skywalkers and everything and gave you sort of this microcosm of a Star Wars story in that world in Sirius. Um, I will say that when it comes down to this trailer in general and my, my thoughts on it, my first impressions is that while I do think it seems really cool and, you know, there's some really interesting things in here about the rise of the Sith, uh, I want to take a guess and say that the night sisters might be involved with this uh sort of like how the jedi ruled over the galaxy and had really no one to oppose while i find all that interesting 
there is still a, a, a huge, huge uh, part of me that is just very cautious on just how they're going to handle this story. You know, a part of me is just, you know, scared and like, are they really going to have a consistent uh, sense of writing? Are they going to be able to, you know, actually make things, you know, very interesting down the road? Are they going to keep up with this consistency, a uh, consistency? I don't know what am I fucking saying right now. Are they going to be able to have this good consistency of tone? Are they going to be able to keep things dark and gritty and not go back and forth? Because one thing I will say about some of the Star Wars series that I watched uh, with the Obi-Wan series, one thing that I felt some type of way about is that it went back and forth with trying to be kid friendly and be dark. And I was like, if you're going to do a series like Obi-Wan where it focuses on some really mature themes and some dark themes, you might as well go ahead and just like, you know, keep it consistent with that tone and not try to bring in something else unless you're going to to balance it very, very well, which there's been a track record of them just not doing it that so well. Um, so, you know, with that being said, I wonder if they're going to be doing that, especially if you have like, you know, the the kid Padawans or like the kid Jedi in training. And, you know, that's one thing I'm just, you know, wor worrying about. Um, I think besides that, I think it's just all about like the writing and just, you know, again, being consistent with it. I'm going to just have to keep it real with you on Star Wars content. And this is the part of me that's going to be real about how I feel in general about Star Wars is that um, Star Wars Rise of the Skywalker and the sequel trilogy really burned me. It really, really burned me on just how my excitement for Star Wars pretty much withered away time after time. Uh, we talk about moral fatigue all the time and just how the MCU uh, has got a little bit tiring because they just don't know what they're doing from time to time. And it's the same with Star Wars. And, you know, we know that in the internet, it's a lucrative business to talk shit about Star Wars and Marvel and just Disney in general and talk about how they're ruining everything in the goddamn world. Like, I just showed you that whole list, and I'll show it to you again, uh, some of these videos of people getting angry about the Acolyte trailer already. That That's just a real thing, and that's always going to happen. Um, and that's always going to happen with Disney properties in general as well. It's just, it, 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 they're just a target now for just bullshit people calling it woke all the goddamn time and you know for me it's just with star wars acolyte i i you know i i want to be excited because it does look dark and it does look like it can really take star wars to a point where like oh man this is this is definitely getting somewhere i'm i'm definitely into this shit but i'm just i'm just not into it like i used to man and, you know, I just can't, like, really put all of my eggs into this basket where, you know, I'm hoping for this to be really, really good. Like, I'm, I, like, I can't do that in general. Um, I, I, I just can't. And uh, one thing is that, and I want to point this out there, Star Wars and Marvel used to be an event. Star Wars and Marvel used to be something to where it's this really big event that you look forward to that... Once it comes out, you sit down and you take it all in. For this, for this show and for other stuff they have for Star Wars, it just kind of feels like something that's just there. And I feel like it's because we're in this age of television and, and filmmaking and just entertainment in general to where a lot of things hit that filmmaking quality already to where we feel fulfilled already. Like usually it's Star Wars or Marvel or some of the big IPs out there that really sustain us in terms of entertainment and you know if this was a different world or back in the day this show would be it everyone would be getting hyped there would be no division there would be no there would be no anger in terms of oh my god is disney gonna fuck this up whatever or people just blindly following star wars without seeing any of the problems uh it would be really dope but because we have other series to look forward to and that and they kind of take notes from star wars and do it even better that's a point where it's just like, yeah, I, I, I just don't know what to tell you, man. Um, I'm going to go to one series that recently came out. It, it, it's it been it's a long, long. It's a big series that we all know and love. But in terms of like what it's done for the current time, it, it's something to where it's really it's really, really been big. 
And I'm just going to go to, I'm going to show you real quick and just let you know what it's all about. Hold on. Here you go. Uh, you guys probably saw this sometime last week or in the last couple weekends. Don't try to impress anyone. You're brave. We all know that. Be simple. Be direct. Nothing fancy. I understand. Nothing fancy. Hey, Dune Part 2. Dune Part 2, like, technically it came out before Star Wars, and it was the primer for Star Wars and a lot of other sci-fi content. But I'm just telling you this right now. If I can go to stuff like Dune that fulfills all of the needs and the excitement that Star Wars used to give me, then it's just like it makes sort of the Star Wars content just seem not that exciting for me. And I'm not trying to be a hater or anything. I'm not trying to be, you know, you know Star Wars is gone woke type of angry man or anything like that. I'm just being real and just saying that the excitement for Star Wars for me isn't that it isn't there. And what would I, who would I rather be? Would I rather be someone that is watching a series just because it's a tradition, even though there's cautions about the writing and just the direction and how they go forward with it and how it feels like they do the same old type of formula? Or would I go to something like Dune Part Two or any other TV or movie series? that fulfills the same needs or the same wants that I want from Star Wars, even Marvel for that reason, and does some in a way to where I don't have to be worried about this shit. They're actually doing all the things I want or they're bringing in new stuff that I didn't think I would want. And here they are. And I'm like, I want more of it. So that's just it. But I, I guess with that being said, Star Wars Acolyte, I'm not here to say that it looks bad or it looks horrible. I'm not here to say it looks woke or anything like that. I'm not here to say like, oh, this is going to fucking flop. Uh, I'm just here to tell you that it looks good. I We will all see how this goes once it comes out. And hopefully I am wrong on this. And this becomes one of the best series for Star Wars. But I'm just letting you know, honestly, just I'm iffy about it with Star Wars. I think just with a lot of other big IPs, I'm iffy with it. But uh, I can't wait to see what it is, what they do with just the old Republic storyline, the rise of the Sith, and just how we see pretty much this rivalry or like this battle between the Jedi and the Sith uh, come about. Um, I think one thing to say about this series that'll be really cool is that when you have, you know, all these different characters that you don't really know about and you're kind of new to them, it does lead to really cool possibilities. So. There is that, well, but also there's that one problem of like, oh, you know, if I don't know these characters, I don't really have that much emotional attachment. So there's the risk of me just being like, I don't know any of these people and I just simply don't give a fuck. So <laughs> there is that. But no, I, I think this, you know, I want to have hope for this and uh, I hope it does well. But if it turns out to be mid or not that great, I won't be totally surprised. But again, I won't have that much stake in it because I'm not a, you know, a huge Star Wars nerd or fan like that. Like like my life isn't dependent on this. It's just cool to talk about it and watch it and uh yeah, I think that's it. But since we're here, since we're uh pretty much going into it, I I do want to react to uh I want to do the good old reaction of some of these guys who are saying like, "Oh boy, this shit is woke already." Cause I am, I am curious about this shit. I'm genuinely curious. Um, as you can see, the thumbnail is pretty much the same, saying like there's a like rate, like the dislike ratio that high, which I don't think it's 3.5 million. I don't think the likes are 3.4 million. I, it's weird. It's like they get different templates to show that the like the dislike ratio is weird. Um. It's at 142,000 likes, so I don't, I don't know. I don't know. What, what is the like to dislike ratio to Star Wars Acolyte? I, I do want to know that. 
because man, I'll tell you this right now. I know what um I know what YouTube was trying to do with getting rid of the like and dislike ratio, but all it does is just lead to just more chaos. Um Oh man, I would like to see the I would like to see the ratio. Yeah, what was it? Does anyone like how do you how do you find out the like to dislike ratio? Because that's the thing. It's like everyone's like it's flooded with dislikes, but it's like we can't even see the dislike ratio. I would have to go somewhere to figure that out. Um I'm, man, we're really going to this journey. How to return YouTube dislikes. Okay. Yeah, because I'm like, why the fuck did YouTube take away YouTube dislikes? Why why did they take that shit away? It's like, bro, there's a reason for that. Return YouTube dislike. Okay. I'm gonna install I'm gonna install install something. Oh, I gotta switch to Chrome. Fuck. Oh, man. Okay, yeah, we're going through this whole Chrome. Yeah, we ain't going to do that. Uh, we'll just go later. I'll figure it out later. I don't know. I'm going to go crazy with that. Um, Let's go here, and let's react to some of these people's videos on it. Oh, Daphne Keen's in this. Okay. Uh, Yeah, let's go back and see, like, somebody's reaction to it just see how they feel let's go to good old geeks and gamers let's see how they feel about this i know they probably are really excited for star wars acolyte history has been made ladies and gentlemen for the first time ever in the history of star wars they have a trailer that has released that is universally disliked is it universally disliked i I mean, we can clearly see that there there's people who like it and there's people who dislike it. So there's a divide there. So I don't, I don't know. Okay. Across the internet, everyone seems to hate this trailer and rightfully so because it's not a good trailer. But it is a testament to the great accomplishment from Harvey Weinstein's former personal assistant, Leslie Headland, bringing diversity into Star Wars for the first time ever. There's never been any diversity in Star Wars until Harvey Weinstein's former personal assistant, Leslie Headland, joined a galaxy far. OK, I'm noticing something right now. He keeps saying Harvey Weinstein's personal assistant. And it's just like, is that supposed to maybe go like, <gasps> D. Harvey Weinstein? Joey Gats. Canceled as heathen. Is that what you're trying to make me get at? To? I don't know. Far away. And now we have all of these down votes. Everyone's talking about this right here on the main Star Wars YouTube channel. 170,000 down votes to 137,000 up votes. And that's not the only place. It gets worse and worse. You have IGN that has theirs ratio, 12,000 down votes. Yeah, you have yeah, Entertainment bad. Weekly, or Entertainment, I'm sorry, tonight, with 1,700 down votes to only 200 up votes. Now, a lot of you might be saying, well, YouTube removed the dislikes. There is a Google Chrome extension that you can add, and you can see the down votes. And that's what makes it even worse, is that... Most people don't know about this. Most people don't know about. Okay. All right. Yeah, they're going in and okay. Can we go in and like your actual thoughts though? Like for real. Let's see. On barriers when there's no barriers to break. So you need to build fake barriers so that you can pretend to break them down. Um, but this is getting a lot of reaction uh, right here. I saw this tweet. Uh, if you have the YouTube dislike extension, you'll find that the Acolyte trailer is ratioed on multiple channels. I have never seen this level of backlash for a Star Wars trailer because it's never happened. Now, we've seen a lot of projects with Star Wars get a lot of dislikes, whether that be Obi-Wan Kenobi or the that's left and the fan base the fan base that's left for star wars generally speaking are not star wars fans they are people that are obsessed with race gender and sexual orientation that is everything that defines their existence and it's everything that divide that, that defines whatever um they're trying to follow within media and they don't support anything 
I mean, look, you've got this right here. I mean, hey, you've got a, a group of diverse characters from Hasbro Pulse. If you want to go check these out. And we all know how that game went last time, don't we? Remember the Reva lightsaber? This is a Google search. Reva lightsaber not funded. First result. Another Star Wars HasLab project falls short. To the surprise of absolutely no one. Ha I didn't even know there was something about a Reva lightsaber. I... Labs camp. Can, can I be real about something? I, and I just, I, I feel like I've, I've said this multiple times. I, I simply don't give a fuck. You know? Like, I, every time there's a project, like, I, I, I can say my criticisms about Star Wars and Marvel and all that, but I don't go that hard into diversity like, 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 like these guys, like, like this guy and others. Like, I don't. Like, I, so like it's like they see one black person with a certain look and they're like that shit's woke that shit's horrible and and you know for me it's like when i saw the acolyte trailer like i saw all that shit i i saw um i i saw that it was gonna get hated on and roasted from certain people it's just it's just a fucking fact when i i'm sorry i my my mind is primed though to be like when i see something and it comes out a certain way, I'm just like, there are going to be some motherfuckers that hate that shit. It, it could be this black child, and they're going to be like, that shit's woke. See, that's what's wrong with, with Disney today. They've just gone woke. And it's just like, okay, all right. It's, you know, just a little black kid. Um, you know, they'll see a, you know, a female, female Jedi. Woke! 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 You know, they'll see a, you know, freaking, they'll see this one black girl with this type of hairstyle. Woke. 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 Jesus is woke. Get that get that out of my sight. Um they'll see the black guy with the killmonger cut, which by the way, <laughs> that that's made other people mad. <laughs> the fact that we we use the fucking killmonger cut and we appropriated the fucking dreads. But again, it gives off the sign of woke, woke. Like it's it's just these are triggers now for a lot of people. And I just, I simply don't give a fuck. I care about the writing. Um, do I do I think that Disney panders a lot? Yes, they pander the fuck a lot. Um, <laughs> and sometimes it's disingenuine. Uh, but like, you know what? I have always believed that when it comes to diversity and equity and inclusion, uh, even, you know, there's got to be a start somewhere. And, you know, there's always going to be trials and errors. And there's going to be some shit right there where it's just like, okay, you're just fucking pandering. But you need that because you still want to include people because this shit is all equal and everything. Um, so, yeah, there, there's that. So, I I know I'm probably going to post a clip of this and someone's going to get angry that I said that. How, how could you? How, how do you not see through Disney's brainwashing sheep and the lemons? <laughs> I wish Trey was here so he could say that. He could be like, sheeple. You're all sheep. You're all lemons. <laughs> you let this happen to my Star Wars. You let this black, woke, killmonger shit in my Star Wars. Lemons. <laughs> okay, I'm done. I don't care. Yeah, let, let people get it. It's same old shit every year. People get mad about Star Wars. People love Star Wars. I'm pretty much saying I don't give a shit. <laughs> Still kind of trash. <laughs> this is all trash. This is just, bro. I'm, uh, you're talking about Star Wars. I'm watching dude having a time of my fucking life. Who gives a shit? <laughs> but okay, let's get into our next trailer. Um. Here's one movie that's been getting some good praise. Uh, Alien Romulus. Uh, Alien Romulus, the new entry into the Alien franchise, movie franchise, that last time we saw Alien, it's been in the form of video games. That, that's the crazy thing. Um, after pretty much the, the crazy downfall of the Alien franchise, after I think Alien like 4 or something, I can't remember, uh, we started getting like Prometheus and then some other alien movies that were done by Ridley Scott that wasn't the greatest and stuff, but had still had their fans out there. And then the, the franchise, which continued through games and stuff. And so there was this movie alien Romulus that was 
heavily rumored and then pretty much teased to everybody saying, hey, this is going to be uh, the newest entry. It's going to be produced and oversaw or overseen by Ridley Scott. It's going to be directed by someone else. And um, I can't remember the director. We'll probably get to when we watch the trailer. And I'll tell you what, I mean, after watching the trailer a little bit, uh, just for a little bit, for, for first couple seconds, I've seen a lot of people say that they love what they're seeing right here. And the coolest part about this movie is that this was originally supposed to go to streaming because remember the prequel to the Predators, you know, movie, uh, Prey, uh, that movie that aired on Hulu, I think about like two years ago now. And that movie was, that movie was so good, but the criticism was that it hit Hulu and it was like, this should be a movie that really should be on the big screen. And yeah, with Alien Romulus, apparently once they started filming, they were like, fuck it, we're putting this in theaters. And everyone was excited for it. So with that being said, let's go ahead and watch the teaser trailer for Alien Romulus and uh, come back with my uh, full reaction. That was fucking awesome. I'm just gonna put it out there right now. That was fucking awesome. I this is gonna be a short segment, and I'm just gonna keep it real. That looks like what a lot of people have been wanting Alien to be. I I'm just gonna it it has all the elements of the old school alien films that everybody wants. And right here we see that it's gonna be directed by Fide Alvarez, who's done don't breathe and also has done evil dead um both of those films pretty good in my opinion and i mean check it there, there is there's really not that much to say the the feel of it the cinematography the look of it the vibe it just all breathes old school alien horror and, and especially this shot right here this is the shot where i'm like okay they really they're really going at it they want to creep you the fuck out. And you go out through the rest of this trailer and pretty much you get this going on. You got these chase sequences. Tight corridors. Oh, this part right here. This is the part where I just said, Jesus Christ. God, good, good God almighty. <laughs> they really go in there. <laughs> Slurping that thing and shit. Go back real quick. <laughs> Jesus like, God damn, but yeah, they're really going into this, man, and uh, man, it's just moments like that right there um, that really just sell me on this movie, man, and I feel like this is how you do a teaser trailer, and also, this is what a lot of you have been looking for for Alien, right? I'm not going to go ahead and trash on Prometheus or some of the other uh, recent Alien movies that came out. Because, you know, they had some go moments with them and they did expand the story. But I think one of the big things that people were missing was that they wanted an alien movie in the franchise, a new one that pretty much harkened back to like the first batch of alien movies with Alien and Aliens. Like those are those two are considered one of the best films of all time. And when you have movies like that and then you take inspiration from them and say, let's go back to that. Let's go back to that shit that it's universally loved. That is a recipe for success. And, you know, it's like the studio was trying to do so much after Aliens. And then next thing you know, nobody knew what the fuck to do. It became part of it became part of like those movie franchises or just franchises in general to where back in the day, they were all freaking fire. They were amazing. 
and then they just became obscure because every time someone tried to do something, it just either was mid or it was just horrible to where it just made the OG fans just disgusted and shit. Um, man, but going back to what I said before about just prey in general, uh, yeah, originally Alien Romulus was supposed to be on Hulu as a streaming film. And after seeing the success of Prey and one other movie that I can remember right now after I show you this, I mean, I have to say that was the smartest decision that they could make. Because right now we're at a point now to where, I'm going to be real, if your movie's good enough, if you actually put the effort into it, your movie doesn't need to be on streaming. Your movie could actually be on the big screen and actually do something. And it, it it's to a point where it's like, a lot of these films really got to be on there, man. And Alien, and any film in the Alien series, people want to see that in the big screen, man. But for Prey right here, this film, this is a film that I saw two years ago. And then afterwards, I was like, I was so blown away at how good it was. And I was like, why is this not on the big screen? Why is this something that I can't watch on IMAX and have a really good freaking time with my friends with, man? Like, it's good to see this on the come from our home. Don't get me wrong. Streaming has its place. But for a film like this that's so good and part of a franchise like the Predator series, you would you would want this to be on the big screen. You would want to just say, like, yes, I saw an actual good Predator film. It wasn't something that was half-baked or mixed or just bad. It was something to where it had a lot of work into it. It had a, a lot of praise for it, a lot of badass sequences just like this one. Um you want that. And Prey was one of those films to where, yes, if you do something like this again for any other franchise, please put this on the big screen. And they're going to be doing that with uh, Alien, Romulus. Um, the other movie that a lot of people said should have been on the big screen that a lot of people were like, huh, why is this not there? And that was a reboot of a horror film that... I think you guys uh, may remember after uh, first glance, and here it is. Beautiful, isn't it? It's really nice. You can hold it. What is it? It's a puzzle. And it's almost finished. Keep going. So if I solve it, do I get a prize? I do. <laughs> What's your deal? It has six sides, six configurations. It opens up and it cuts you. They come to collect. It's time. Greater delights await. We wish to see you proceed. Feed it. Their blood. Their pain. That was a Hellraiser from all the way back in 2022, which was crazy enough. I won't say Hellraiser was as good as Prey, this reboot of Hellraiser, but it was a film where it turned a lot of people. And it said like, yeah, if I would have saw this in theaters, I would have really enjoyed this. And I, I feel like this is just one of those things where people, people are like, listen, we're actually seeing like good interpretations of these types of works of these, of these old school projects that made us fall in love with movies. And I feel like with this, I, I mean, you, you gotta put it on the big screen, man. You, you gotta do something. And Hellraiser was a good example of that. Prey was a great example of it. And now you get it with 
you know, alien Romulus where there's just like, listen, I think we can take a chance on this shit, man. And I think from looking at this teaser trailer and just looking at what they're doing with the vibe of all, the direction, the score even, of I, I think they're gonna I think it's gonna be probably maybe one of the best movies of the year, of uh, in my opinion. Uh that that's just from just, you know, first impressions or reactions from it. I'm not going to say like it's somewhere it's a definitive home run because trust me, there's a lot of projects out there that we've said, man, this looks fucking amazing with a great trailer, a well-made trailer. The editing is awesome. But then next thing you know, the movie's just like, you know, mid or has a lot of problems. So, hey, but I have a lot of hope for this film and I have a lot of hope that it's going to get some people rocking and saying like, you know what? Going back to the movie theater, it has its perks. So, uh, yeah, man, I, I can't wait for this. This that that part right there really creeps me the fuck out, Jesus. So, Alien Romulus comes out, uh, I believe, August sixteenth of this year, only in theaters. So, yeah, that's gonna be really dope. It's gonna be really, really dope. Can't wait to see that. Uh, yeah, we're getting by this episode pretty quickly. Um, here we go. So, next thing, Marvel nineteen forty three, the rise of Hydra. So this was a game that was announced all the way back, I think, last year at Disney 23, the little expo Disney does every year, where everyone gets super hype about new projects. And they announced a new game uh, that was going to involve a narrative-driven story with Captain America and Black Panther. And this looks really awesome from what a lot of people said. And uh, I haven't watched the trailer yet. I haven't really you know, gone in and just given my reaction to it. So this will be a live reaction to it all. And uh, I'm really looking forward to it. I'm really looking forward to what it's got. Um, I'm not going to lie to you. I don't have that much hope for like Marvel video games sometimes, except for if it has to do anything with Insomniac and Spider-Man. But in the age of gaming that we live in now to where shit looks like a movie, uh, one can dream. So let's get into it. The trailer for Marvel 1943, The Rise of Hydra. They're combing the streets. Searching house to house. If they arrest you too, they will take you to their headquarters and you will not return. I'm more concerned with the six foot cat man who's got claws that can cut through vibranium alloy. I count that makes two super soldiers loose in Paris. Three, counting you. And that's two too many. I'll be there before the sun rises, before the Germans, before that American. The eye of force has been found. Please, just stick to the rooftops. Be careful. Stand was on me. When am I not? Real quick, did it get fucking cyborg to voice Black Panther? Cause if if they if they did, holy shit, that's fucking awesome. Bro. Bro, they got they got the king on there, they got cyborg. Oh man, this shit is fucking fire, man. Man, that makes me kind of want him to be the new Black Panther at the MCU. I'm not even gonna lie about that. It's better if I tackle this one alone. You may encounter some obstacles. That won't be a problem. Our cat friend is definitely here too. By the look of things, he's not very far ahead. The American boy is right on your heels. Who the hell are you? If you wanted us dead, we'd be dead. So what do you want? Answers. That's far enough! Stay out of my way! Stand aside! I do not take orders from anyone! I don't have time for this. Neither do I.
Uh, uh, we might have a fucking banger, folks. Uh, first off, I want to go ahead and correct something. That is not T'Challa that Cyborg is voicing. Um, that is actually uh, T'Challa's great great grandfather, I believe, Azuri. So yeah, because it's said in 1943, and Captain America did have an interaction with. Black Panther, and that was a really dope interaction, to say the least. So, want to get that out there. Um, but in general, if I had to say anything, this this does look amazing. The graphics in here look fucking awesome. Oh my god! Uh, if I make sure I'm on 1080p right here, uh, t- this looks really really good. This 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 looks like a short film. If this looks like something from like Love, Death, and Robots. Like in terms of the CGI, how crisp it looks, how a lot of these these this atmosphere, this environment looks real. This looks really good. Oh my god! I mean, I'm, I am like it's Unreal Engine five, so I'm not totally surprised. We've seen some crazy things with it, but to see it in like a game like this, a Marvel game, it's like wow, it's it's making a lot of people happy. But I will say this is that we've seen this shit before, though. We've seen this shit before where you know, game trailer comes out, the story trailer comes out, and the look of it is amazing, and the story looks awesome. But the gameplay is a different story, and I will say, I would not be surprised if this becomes one of those games to where the game, the, like, the, the the graphics look fucking awesome, but the gameplay is, is, is different. It's a whole different story. I have hope that the gameplay is going to be fire, but I can't lie to you. I... I mean, you can never know, man. The gaming industry, like movies and TV shows, one thing comes out and the next thing is another one. So uh, wouldn't be totally surprised. But no, nah, man, this looks dope, man. Uh, uh, basically, this is going to be revolving a story. Revol- oh, let me, what am I doing right here? Basically, this is going to be a story revolving around the entire stretch of how Hydra rose into power, Captain America tried to take it down, and then Black Panther taking it down with his own roots from Wakanda. And this is going to be them meeting up for the first time and probably going to be one of those old stories that Captain America remembers from back in the day when he first got the Super Soldier Serum. Um, as we can see as we can see and hear, the voice acting from everybody is pretty top-notch. I don't know who voices Captain America in this game, and that's probably what I'm going to look up right now. But that voice actor for Black Panther, for uh, Azuri, it's, he, hey, he is fucking awesome. And you're, I'm, I'm talking about the guy who voices is the guy who, same guy who voices Black, uh, not Black Panther, Cyborg. And he is probably one of the greatest voice actors ever, ever. Kari Payton, who's going to be playing Azuri. Uh, and it's going to be Drew Moreland who is going to be voicing Steve Rogers. I'll put this right here. Uh, Megalyn Echikun Wolke uh, plays Natalie, a Wakandan spy. And then Mark Richardson plays Gabriel Jones, a member of the Howling Commandos. Okay, that's going to be really dope. Uh, Megalyn, I don't really know too much. I don't know about Drew Moreland either or Mark Richardson. But Kari Payton is the one guy where I'm like, okay, if he's in a project voicing everybody, anybody, or everybody, because there's some case he he be voicing multiple people in one show. Uh, check out Invincible if you think I'm lying. It looks re- like he is a dope voice actor. Kari Payne is probably one of the most legendary voice actors of all time, especially in in terms of black voice actors. So uh, him voicing Black Panther is fucking awesome, and I just can't wait to see more of that. Honestly, man. Um, yeah, man. Car- Kari Payne, man, he is. He he is fucking all every time I hear his voice, I be I get fucking hyped because it's like he does so much good ass work. And sometimes he goes underrated, other times it's just like, yeah, man, people realize he's that fucking good. So here you go, here's a little bit of what he's all about. Food's a lot better since we signed on with the J-Man. Out of my way. You don't know what you did. There's no way you could beat me. Go. I don't have to beat you. 
I just have to slow you down. He's mostly cyborg and stuff. I don't like your music. Foolish human. Have you forgotten that I control this star system? My decommissioning will erase all memories of your brave exploits and our fun times together. Without having to worry about you bystanders. All of its power shall soon be mine. Yes. Soon my power will know no limits. Eject like you. Uh, sounds like the alien dirtbag is asking for another whooping. There's still the small matter of all his defenses around New York City. Thank you, Professor Xavier. Team, some of you I've worked with before, others of you I've fought with, but lives are on the line, so there's no... Hole on your team, feeding him intel? I cannot rule out the possibility. I will investigate, quietly. Not yeah, yeah. Uh, in, in short, Kari Payton is an amazing voice actor, and he can do no wrong, honestly, man. He is, he is awesome. So, uh, yeah, I, I mean, in terms of it, I, again, just like I did with Alien Romulus, man, it looks hyped and it's already getting me sold. So I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing what they're going to do here with it. Um, but again, there could be that, you know, I guess with just this whole theme of this night of this whole episode has just been, man, this looks fucking awesome, but you never know. And I feel like it's just one of those things of just like, just wait and see what happens because you never know. So uh, I'm looking forward to it, man. I, I really am. I'm really, really looking forward to this. Uh, so I guess, yeah, that, that goes for our reaction for that. So uh, I guess with that being said, let's get into our next thing, which, uh, you know, I'll talk about Dragon Ball. I'll talk about Dragon Ball, Spark and Zero. Actually, no, we're not going to be talking about Dragon, uh, Dragon Ball Sparking Zero. Let's actually talk about something that I can have a, a lot of conversation on, and I think we're going to try to end the episode on this one, because Sparking Zero might be its own separate thing that I just talk about and just go from there. Uh, so, yeah, sorry, guys. If you wanted me to talk about Sparking Zero, I'll probably talk about it in, a, in another episode and stuff. But let's talk about X-Men 97, because on it, that came out today at the timing of this recording, and to be honest, like I saw the first two episodes. I didn't see all of them. I'm still watching a little bit. You might get like, you know, a, a midway review of it from me or like maybe towards the end of the season because there's a lot to unpack here. Uh, and plus, you know, for me, it's like I got to watch a little bit of the old series because I'm someone who didn't grow up with this series. I grew up in 99 as a baby. So I you know, born in 99, I pretty much, I was a spectacular Spider-Man kid and an X-Men, a Wolverine X-Men kid and an X-Men Evolution kid. So I didn't grow up with like the X-Men 1993, 1995 series. But with X-Men 97, uh, man, yeah, it's just, uh, gotta, I gotta be honest, man. I, I got to be honest. This series really hit a home run in its first couple episodes just from the fact that this series really went back on to just what made the x-men the x-men really following up on the whole story of this animated iteration of the x-men that people fell in love with with just the death of professor x how is the world like with you know professor x gone pretty much and like the x-men having to pretty much stop mutant hate and now you have all of these big twists and these new characters to come around or just these older characters that have these new roles like Magneto. Uh, yeah, it's it's definitely interesting. And it leads to some really cool story beats. And if there's one thing I have to say about this series or like these first two episodes, I will be honest. I didn't know how I was going to feel with the the animation style and the art style of it all about like how they pretty much wanted to go ahead and give it the same treatment or just modernize it but keep it in the same old style because i was like i don't know how i feel about it on one end it's pretty cool on another end it's a little it's a little wonky it's a little wonky on my end but i think after seeing some fight sequences and some other iconic moments from these two episodes i can firmly say uh this is this is really dope, and I, I have no problem with it whatsoever. Let's actually see some of it right now.
enemy mine. Might I induce you to a change of heart? Louis, I think this is the beginning of a beautiful involuntary friendship. Like, I'm I'm be real with you, man. When you see that, get your heart pumping, you start realizing why it's so good. And like when you modernize stuff like this, you get fast paced action sequences that are just through the roof and you're you're excited for all of that, man. Um man, it's just man, it's, it was really dope. Uh man, let me go, let me try to go to some other scene. It comes there up a fight scene, scene there. Oh, let me stop that right here. There was one with uh yeah, right here, right here, like the plane crash sequence in the first episode. That whole ending sequence for episode one was pretty badass. I'm, I'm just gonna gotta be real with you on that, man. It was, it was real badass. Think you can do that, Logan? Hang on, people! <laughs> Solid work, team. See you on the ground. <laughs> like, like that right there. That right there is pretty fucking awesome. Like the way that 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 entire shot is done, and just how it was just the art style, everything. It it just looks badass. It's like, yo, fam, I feel like a kid again. Or what? that's what a lot of the OG fans of the show felt like. They just felt like kids again. And I feel like that's what makes the show so good. It makes you relive those nostalgic moments, but it doesn't feel like member berries or nostalgia bait. It actually feels like some good shit, and it's awesome. Hold on, this last part, too. To me, my X-Men. Frask. Uh, try to go to some other parts too with it that I I really like. Okay, right here with Storm. This is this is the part that made me go. Okay, yeah, this it, they they put a lot of love into this shit, man. Friend, detective. Ancient sons. Uh, up, hold on, I gotta I gotta go more. I gotta find one where it shows everything because I wanna. Cause I want to show you the entire storm clip because I'm telling you uh, one thing first is that something bad happens to storm in the second episode that I'm not going to go ahead and uh, show right now. Cause that'd be pretty bad. But uh, I do want to show you just what storm does in the first episode. That is really, really badass. Hold on. Let me see if I could find it. Cause she does it here. And I was just like, Okay, yeah, and the voice actor for Storm Two is all the 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 voice acting for everybody was pretty dope. Like I had no problem whatsoever with just how everyone was was done and voiced. It was like okay, this uh they 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 knocked it out of part with everybody's voice acting, and I and I heard that was the one problem that everyone had, and it was like no, I don't I don't really see a problem whatsoever here. Uh, let me see if I can find it. Let me see. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, here we go. Let's see. Let's see if this is it. Forecast. And to reclaim these relics of hatred. Shit. <laughs> see right there. See right there. I know it was fast, but when you when you do it like that, it's like man, it's woo man. Hold on. Give him the forecast. And to reclaim these relics of hatred. Man, I'm I'm telling you, man. I'm sorry for like the cut quicks and everything like that, because I'm just finding shit on YouTube and you know how copyright is, but man, at I, you got to be real, man. 
man, no matter how you felt about this series earlier on, about you like you don't know if Dizzy's gonna bullshit or anything like that. They did a really good job with these fight sequences. And, and go into that whole storm sequence right there, that pretty much showed you that she's an Omega level threat. I'm I'm just gonna keep it real. Uh if you didn't know, she's a she's a fucking badass. And I can't wait to see her live action, man. That I cannot wait to see her in the MCU. Here you go. Right here. Boom. <laughs> the way that shot was done was like, yo, that is amazing. Man, they just a lot, a lot of love here. Um, so, yeah, I won't give too much story beats. I think that's one other thing that makes this series good is that the story elements, uh, the story here for X-Men 97, it continues off from the old series, the OG series. And the way it's going, it's just like, wow, like for a Saturday morning cartoon feel, you also got that vibe of just how, man, there's the childlike nature of it. But there's also like the adult tones that made people feel like, man, you know, this is deeper than what it is, man. And I'll say this right now and I'll, I'll say it again for all the motherfuckers that was saying that X-Men 97 was woke and they're saying that X-Men was never woke. First of all, I did a whole TikTok on that disproving y'all motherfuckers. Stan Lee wanted this shit uh, to talk about some deeper shit as a lot of his other projects. So that's that's one thing about mutant hate, how this is relevant to the, like the the real times, the social times of America, especially now, that's just real. But yeah, I mean, and, and that, like, bro, this story really gets into it. And especially with just, you know, who they're fighting against, what this is revolving around. Like, bro, like this story, the story of X-Men has some serious themes into it that you cannot help yourself but to relate to the world that we live in today. And, and the time that we live in today, the toxicity and shit. And I, I'm not trying to play no victim card here or anything like that, but it's real. And if you're still going to argue with me about that, and you're still going to find ways to say, oh, man, this shit is just woke. It's just a problem. Then you just don't fucking know X-Men like that. And I, and I don't know what to tell you. Um, and I think one way to put it is that in episode two, Magneto returns. And I won't even go ahead and... And 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 then sugarcoat this or or say like I won't spoil this. There's a speech get, that Magneto gives that's really well done, and I think it's something to where everybody was just like, man, if there's one thing to say about Magneto and just his character, ah, this is this is good. This is really good. I'm gonna try to find a way to. I'll, I'm gonna try to find a way to not spoil pretty much how this happened, but. I mean, there's a big twist that happens in episode two out of other many big twists. And the way they do it right here is, is it's awesome, man. And, and man. What? Oh, hold on. I forgot to take it out of uh, the old playback speed. Hold on a second. Put on normal playback. Right here. All right, let's go. What must we do to be good enough? a time I would smite you all for what was done to Storm. But today, I have saved you from your own. For an old friend has challenged me to remember this view of Earth. How vast it is versus how small we make it. But merely to accept that this is a shared world with a... Do not make me let you down. Nathan. <laughs> the way that, that line was given, that was a hard motherfucking line. I'm just going to be real about that. Um, and just when you when you combine that level of dialogue with pretty much the, the storytelling and also with the music in the background and this beautiful animation, you're just left there just shocked at, like, how good they could do this. And I'm only saying shocked because Marvel's just been on a really rocky track record right now. So, I mean, like, at this point, when you see something this good, like, near perfect, you're just like, wow. Okay, can we keep getting more of this? Can we keep being consistent? And I'm so glad it's doing it with X-Men, especially with pretty much, like, this, like, I want to say this is, like, one of their big, big appearances now after getting acquired from Fox. There's that. But, uh, man, they, they hit it right out the park. 
Uh, I wish I could go more in depth with it, but I'll probably do like a end of, end of series or end of season review on it just so we can talk more and more about it because there's a lot of things in here that really, really shocked me. Um, <laughs> there's one in general that, uh, man, fuck it. I'll just, I'll, I'll say it. I'll, I'll just say it right now. Um, there's a moment in here between two characters that made me go, holy shit. Actually, I, I, man, I, man, actually, I'll bring up two moments in here. I'll bring up two spoilers. For one, there is a sequence or a moment between Jean Grey and Storm that made every that made me, you know, really want to go watch the OG series because of just how deep and personal it got, and just how you just have like these great moments of dialogue and stuff, and it just felt really good to hear, man. I mean, honestly, it just felt like it was natural and it was a lot of like in-depth moments that the X-Men series does a really good job in doing, man. And I really appreciated that. Here you go. How do I tell him he's different? That the world will remind him of it every day. That you wish him to be born human. I have wondered what it would be like to be human. It is a tempting daydream. But then I remember how my mutant gifts brought me to this mansion, to this family. Can't shake this feeling that something terrible is coming. Boy, do I sound like a fool. You sound like a mother. Xavier. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just be real about that. Uh, bro, the, the great dialogue in between them and throughout the series, you just have these really cool, relatable conversations that that's what is what a great series is supposed to do like this. Something that's supposed to give you this childlike nature and this nostalgia, but also hit you on these really deep themes that just really make you happy. Um, and again, like I said, if you want to call this shit woke and get mad about it, tough titty nigga, go cry to your goddamn mama because X-Men's always been woke and it's always hit these like deep levels. And both episodes one and two really showcase you that, man. And, that's what it is. And oh, and here here's the other thing that made people go like, oh shit, we really don't do this. Sacrifice brought about a world more tolerant towards mutants. I am indebted to honor his last wish, even if his X-Men won't trust me. I didn't go about demanding their trust. I earned it. Feared you would do your best to avoid being alone with me, Rogue. Think twice. And that's the part where everyone was like, oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> that might actually uh some people might get mad about that because <laughs> you know the whole thing with gambit and fucking rogue and now you got now you got magneto and rogue and no one really expected that at all i'm gonna try to see if i could find some more stuff about that hold on here you go um uh, yeah there's so many clips of x-men 97 on youtube now i'm i'm shocked about that here you go but not to my past is too littered with error. Mine was too, remember? But the X-Men still took me in. The thing is, I didn't go about demanding their trust. I earned it. I feared you would do your best to avoid being alone with me, Rogue. Yeah, shit. <laughs> do you think your team would still trust you if they knew? That was a long time ago, Eric. And that cat's got to stay in its bag. You hear me? <laughs> that cat's got to stay in its bag. <laughs> okay, okay, I'm going to say right now. I, I don't think that was supposed to be a sexual innuendo, but I was thinking of like, that cat's got to stay in the bag. Man, he was just like, yeah, that ain't the only cat. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But then this other part right here, too, towards the end of episode one, right here. As it is also mutant nature to be heard, seen, to feel another soul finally seeing yours. Only to then sometimes watch it break in a blink that changes your life forever. Shit, yeah, like the way they're gonna set up that storyline, like a lot of people are gonna hate it, but I'm not gonna lie, fam, I'm looking forward to that. I'm looking to see how this develops, how this rogue ro goes on. Like that's <laughs> that shook me a little bit. And I feel like in the comics, they did, Magneto and Rogue did have a relationship of some sort. So I don't think it's totally out of left field. But I know for a lot of people who love that relationship between Rogue and Gambit, seeing that was like, oh, shit, that's not good at all. I don't want that. I don't want that at all. <laughs> so, and plus, I think 
Rogue is a child. Like, Rogue is still very young and Magneto's old. So it's like, that age gap is going to definitely creep some people out. So I don't know. But I, I think overall, like, it sucks that the creator of X-Men 97 was had to leave and got fired from Disney. And I still don't know the reason for it. But it seems like from just interviews and just from testimonials from other people part of this project, they love everything about it. They love that he has so much care for it. He had so much love for just the series in general and just how, you know, he wanted to keep this at the level to where this is what X-Men has always been about by hitting those deep social justice themes, hitting those really dope action sequences, character development, character moments, the the whole theme of family and being a team. I mean, all of that you see here in these first two episodes and it, it not only does it catch that nostalgia of Saturday morning cartoons, but it also just captures you in that storytelling element. And just as a series in general, as an animated series where you're just like, this is fucking awesome. And man, for that, I can't wait to see what they have going on for these next couple of episodes, man. So yeah, X-Men 97, absolutely love it. I think they did a really good job starting off and uh, I can't wait to see more of it, man. So yeah, yeah, let's, let's freaking do it. Let's, let's really, really do it. Uh, Oh, did they get mad? Oh, something about Elon Musk. I don't know. Sorry about that, guys. That was other shit. All right. I think that is it for today's episode of The Midnight Drop. We talked a lot of trailers and did some quick reactions. So this was definitely a jam-packed episode. A uh, quick one, though. So tomorrow, I think, the next episode, I think I'll have a review for Invincible Season 2, Episode 6. So I can't wait to see where that goes with that. But with that being said, I'm your host, Jordan Malone. Thanks so much for listening and watching to The Midnight Drop, where we talk about movies, TV shows, comic books, social commentary, and all that good stuff. You can catch with us next time on Spotify, YouTube, TikTok, wherever long it will stay on here and also on Instagram. But with that being said, stay safe, stay you, and stay blessed. Peace.